On today's episode, very specific details about the Cybertruck are leaked as we get within two weeks of the delivery event. A clause in the Cybertruck purchase agreement looks to stop flippers from making serious money on early resales, and Tesla makes deals overseas to sell their superchargers. As the November 30th launch event marches steadily closer, new details about Tesla's Cybertruck are being uncovered and discussed by the community. Honestly, it's almost impossible to keep a secret from Cybertruck fans by now, and between sightings of the vehicle at shows like Electrify Expo in Austin, Texas, and scaling difficult hills in off-road trails, it seems that Tesla's security hasn't been able to keep pace with the community's ability to get more sensitive information. Which is exactly what happened on November 8th when the YouTube channel TFLEV posted this video featuring information given to them by an unnamed insider source. The source was able to give them a list of specific information and images to help confirm some validity. Now, just like with any other bits of information from unconfirmed sources, no one can guarantee that the figures presented in the video are genuine or even in what context these measurements were taken. The hosts of the video say as much while discussing the dimensions of the seats, where they very correctly point out that the numbers mean nothing without knowing how exactly Tesla took the measurements. But let's consider for a moment why the information could be genuine. Like we said a moment ago, the Cybertruck is due to start deliveries on November 30th, a date that Tesla seems fairly determined to keep. That means that the company has applied for all its regulatory licenses, the paperwork needed to actually sell these vehicles, which necessitates having all this sort of information laid out in an easy to read format. Going further after the delivery event, Tesla will likely start openly selling the trucks from their store locations, so it would be necessary to send their staff a handy information packet about these extra measurements in case a customer asks. And as we saw with the Model S Plaid racing seats back in October, once a new product or information sheet hits the service centers, it's much easier to leak out to the public. So there is a decent chance that this leak contains genuine information, even if it's a little out of context in places. So let's just go over what was in the leak and compare it to what we know. First off, the exterior dimensions. The information given to TFLEV shows that the Cybertruck will have an overall length of 18.6 feet, a width of 79.9 inches, not including the mirrors, a height of 70.5 inches on the medium clearance setting, and a wheelbase of 143 inches wide. Most of these measurements were either known or closely estimated by the community already, although the height at the medium suspension clearance setting is good to know if only so we have something to work with when estimating the highest and lowest suspension settings for the truck. Storage capacity is about what we expected too, with the bed coming in at 72.8 inches long by 51 inches wide, but we also finally get some confirmation on the size of the frunk with a weight capacity of 420 pounds and a stated volume of 7.1 cubic feet, half of the volume of the F-150 Lightning's front trunk capacity. It makes sense considering Tesla didn't have a huge ice engine cavity to make use of when designing the Cybertruck, but it is a little disappointing to see such a tiny storage area for Tesla's truck. The curb weights are 6,670 pounds for the two-motor variant and 6,890 pounds for the tri-motor. Again, just about what everyone expected. Similarly, the tow rating coming in at 11,000 pounds is also what has been teased for the Cybertruck for some time now, for the dual motor at least. It's unclear if this number is also for the tri-motor, but that seems unlikely. Tesla originally claimed their tri-motor would be able to tow 14,000 pounds, so we'll have to wait on confirmation for that still. From here, we get into those internal measurements that are a little difficult to nail down because we can't be sure exactly how and from which reference points they were taken, but the front and rear measurements are very similar despite the peaked shape of the truck and the numbers seem to show a very roomy vehicle. Headroom comes in at 41.6 inches in the front and 39 inches in the rear. Legroom is 41 inches in the front and 40.9 inches in the rear practically the same space. Shoulder room in the front is 63 inches with a 62 inch clearance for the rear area. And finally, the hip room for both front and rear seats is noted as being 57.2 inches. 
Again, there's no way to tell exactly what this will feel like without being in the truck itself, but it seems like the interior design has allowed for extremely similar experiences, whether you're riding in the front seats of a Cybertruck or the rear. And to cap off all that information, several of the images provided show off some important features, such as the ability to get at the rear axle motors via a panel under the rear seats, and the inclusion of a NEMA 1450 power outlet in the bed that has two 120 volt outlets and a single 240 volt one. All things considered, should these numbers be accurate, Cybertruck ranks somewhere among the middle of the field of its competitors. It's got slightly less space on both interior and exterior spaces than the EV redesigns of legacy pickups like the Lightning, but more space than the Rivian R1T. And in terms of power, the Cybertruck seems very comparable to all of its competitors. And if the tri-motor ends up being able to pull 14,000 pounds as previously advertised, then it should be right up there with even its hybrid and ICE contemporaries. Again, all this is if the data is genuine but so much of it lines up with what the community has guessed at for a while, and we're so close to the delivery date for the first Cybertrucks that this data seems fairly credible. Regardless, it won't be long now until we see a teardown video or something of that nature, so we'll know soon enough, just a couple more weeks to go. If you enjoy these weekly updates, you'll enjoy our weekly newsletter. And right now, if you sign up, you'll receive a free discount code to our merch store. To sign up, just go to www.theteslaspace.com and you'll receive a welcome email with your discount code shortly after. Tesla Cybertruck is probably one of the most hyped vehicles ever made. And with the first deliveries due to take place in about two weeks, early buyers have noticed that an extra protection against scalpers and resellers has been quietly slipped into the purchase agreement for the shiny new pickup truck. The text itself is full of very specific legal language, but the gist is that if you are one of the lucky people who can get an early Cybertruck and you decide to sell it within the first year of you owning it, you could be sued by the company for at least $50,000. The updated clause, which can be read on the company website, is the sort of thing that most companies write up to stop dealerships and scalpers from buying up the limited early stock of a new vehicle and selling it for way more than they purchased them for. As an example of this, when the Peterson Auto Museum in LA held an auction in October for an early VIN-numbered Cybertruck, they closed at $400,000. That's a hell of a markup, and it was a Tesla-sanctioned event to hype the truck's release. So while it is a little aggravating to be told what to do with a thing you've just spent a lot of money for, we can very much understand why Tesla is being more cautious with the release of their extremely popular new truck. At last estimate, there are potentially over 2 million pre-orders for the vehicle, which is a lot of incentive for some wealthy opportunists to make a bunch of money. That said, Tesla isn't being unreasonable. Among some of the first lines of this clause, there are details about an exemption for this rule should you have a legitimate reason to sell your new Cybertruck. There are probably a bunch of good reasons to need to sell an expensive new vehicle, so Tesla is willing to work with people who talk to them about selling first, and if your reason is satisfactory to them, you'll be allowed. Otherwise, you'll have to wait a year before flipping your early VIN marked Cybertruck, which honestly doesn't seem that bad. Last we heard from Tesla themselves, it's going to take 18 months for the company to hit volume production of their new truck. So after a year of waiting, you'll likely still be able to make a profit from selling an early Cybertruck. There's been no word on how long this clause will stay in the purchase agreement either, but unless you're buying a Lamborghini or some other elitist brand, rules like this don't tend to stick around once the vehicle stops being so limited in number. So maybe summer 2025, this won't be an issue anymore. Tesla has had a stellar year for its charging technology. A steady campaign to get the company's North American charging standard to be named the actual standard in North America has led to some unprecedented partnerships with major companies across the automotive industry. It makes sense then that Tesla would hardly stop at just one continent. First up, on November 10th, SAIC GM, a joint venture company which sells GM's Chevrolets, Buicks, and Cadillacs in China, announced that they had signed a deal with Tesla to allow their customers access to Tesla's Chinese supercharging network in a relatively similar deal to the one GM's North American division struck back in June to make use of the NACS and Tesla's system of supercharger stations over here. 
Making the deal lets SAIC GM utilize NACS equipped vehicles in China just as easily as they will be able to in the US and Canada, especially once the company swaps out their CCS hardware for NACS in 2025. But Tesla wasn't finished. On November 13th, EG Group, a charging infrastructure company operating in the UK and Europe, announced that they had made a deal to purchase some Tesla supercharging units in an effort to build up their EV charging network from the current number of about 600 or so to over 20,000. This isn't very different from a deal Tesla made with the British gas mega company BP for the purchase of $100 million worth of supercharger equipment back in October. That deal was so that BP could add Tesla superchargers to their gas stations across the UK. Now EG Group is gearing up to do the same. And this shows how savvy Tesla is with their charging hardware. They could have held on to it and just made their own stations all across Europe, but instead they've been selling their tech and letting other more established companies spread their infrastructure for them. It's a solid way to grow other streams of income aside from selling their vehicles. And on top of all that, it's a clear and simple way to ensure that Tesla's charging technology has a place in the international EV consciousness and could maybe even become an international standard. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please consider supporting us directly on Patreon and hit the like button. If content like this starts to perform well for us, then we can continue to make a lot more high quality videos for you in the future.